Do you have a large amount of data you need to ingest? Are you looking for a place to ingest, transform, and load that data? You can accomplish this using Azure Data Factory. It is designed to handle data from anywhere and in any format and make it available in a secure, centralized environment. Hello and welcome. Today, we are going to show you how to get started with Microsoft Azure Data Factory. In this video, we will show you everything you need to know to use Microsoft Azure Data Factory. So please stick around. First, we will create a new Data Factory service with some common settings. Then we create a data pipeline inside that service. And finally, we manually trigger that pipeline, moving CSV formatted data from a source to a destination. By the end, you will see how easy it is to move data using Azure Data Factory. To create a new Data Factory service, we go to the Azure portal at portal.azure.com and search for Data Factory. From the results, select the one that mentions Microsoft and Azure service. You will see a description of this service. It mentions how Data Factory can integrate disparate data sources, create ETL or ELT processes using a visual editor, connect to more than 90 different data sources, and run the pipelines on a serverless service that can scale up or down instantly. The service can connect securely to on-premise sources or connect to other clouds. An SSIS integration runtime is included to rehost on-premise SSIS packages. You can read ratings and reviews of the service from previous customers. Click on Create and a web form will load. Select the Azure subscription you want to use. We will create a new resource group for this demo named RG Data Factory Temp to make it easier to delete this when we are finished. Give this instance a name and select the region. We are using West US. V2 is the only version available. Click on Next. You will see an option to configure Git to be used with the service using Azure DevOps or GitHub. This will help to track and approve changes during the lifetime of this project. We will set this to configure later. On the networking tab, we want to use an integration runtime to run the pipeline that we will set up, so leave this as selected. Also, we will be using a public endpoint for this demo. You may want to select private for any secure application. You can change this later. Click Next. In the Advanced tab, you will see an option to encrypt your data with your own encryption key. We will leave this as unselected and use a Microsoft managed key for simplicity. Click Next. Add any tags you want for the service here. Click Next again to review your selections. Once you are finished validating, click on the Create button at the bottom. This will take a few seconds. You can watch the progress in the upper right or click on the bell icon above to see a message when it is completed. The deployment was successful. Now we click on Go to Resource. We see the service here with some information about the service. Click on Launch Studio to work with the service. You will see a simple interface to the service. We expand the last frame and see a few menu options. Home is the default view. It will show some wizards to ingest or transform data, create pipelines, and set up SSIS. Under Author, you can create pipelines, track change data capture, add data sets and data flows, or run a power query. Right now, these are all empty. Later, you will see items show up here as they are created. Under Monitor, you can watch pipelines run, trigger a new run, view data as it changes, view your integration runtimes where your pipelines will run, debug your data flows, and view alerts and metrics. Under Manage, you can create linked services or an integration runtime. We will show you how to do this in a few minutes. You can also set up your Git repo here, create automated triggers, etc. You can also create new and manage current Microsoft Entra ID credentials here. Under Learning Center, you will find the Quick Start option. View tutorials and videos to learn more about Data Factory and view or use templates in your project. Click back on Manage and select Linked Services. You can see many, many options available here for data storage and for compute services. Almost all data storage types can be found here. This is where you would set up a connection to another server, including an on-premise server. You would fill out the server name, database name, credentials, etc. This could be used as a source or a destination for data. We will need to set up a place to store data to show how to run a data pipeline. We search for storage account. Select the Microsoft Azure service here. Notice that there are many others to choose from. This storage account will set up a secure and reliable place for us to store data as blobs to be used later. Click on the Create button, then fill out the form that appears. 
the latest subscription will show up here as default, along with the resource group. You can change these, but we will leave them as is for simplicity. Give the account a name, a region, and select the level of performance you want. We select standard. There is a premium option for low latency needs. We change the redundancy to local for testing. You will usually leave GRS selected for a production application. Click Next. Here are some security options. The defaults are secure enough for our demo. We will leave the defaults. The permitted scope can be changed to block outside access to the data. We keep the access as hot access, which is optimal if the data will be used frequently. Click on Next to see networking options. We will select Enable Public Access from all networks for now, but this is not secure. You should change this to Semi-Private or Private Access if you have a virtual network available. You can add IP addresses here to allow access to this resource. Click Next to see data protection. You can select to temporarily save any deleted items for recovery later, including a point in time restore for containers. Click Next for encryption. Here you can set up to use your own encryption keys for selected types. You can also encrypt your infrastructure for more security. Click on Next and add tags here. Then click Next to review your selections. Then click Create. Progress is shown in the upper right again. This should only take a few seconds. The new resource will show up in the list during the creation process. When it is finished, you will see a deployment is complete flag. Click on go to resource and select the containers item under data storage on the left. You will initially see the logs container. Under the overview menu item, you will see a metadata about this storage account, most of which were selected in the form previously. We need to create a new storage container named source and destination for our dataset that we will be using in our pipeline. Go back to the containers menu item and select the plus next to container to create a new one. Fill out a name for the source data location, keeping the default encryption. Click create and this will show up in the containers list in a few seconds. Do the same for a container name sync. Then click on the source item in the list, select upload and drag a CSV or text file into the upload area. You can overwrite the file if it already exists. Click upload. You will see the file in the list now and you can view the contents. Notice this was uploaded as a block blob. To view the contents, you can click on the file and select edit. You will see other properties listed in the other tabs. You can also view the file by clicking on the ellipses on the right and selecting View Edit. The file contains sales data for a department store with a comma-separated format. Launch the Data Factory Studio again. You can expand and collapse the frames on the left if you need more space. Now we are going to create a new pipeline to move the data from the source to the sink. Go to the Pipelines menu item, select New Pipeline. You can also select a new folder to put the files in and keep them more organized. Once you are in the new pipeline form, you will want to give this a name and a description as eventually you will probably have many of these to keep track of. You can see a lot of items listed under activities. We will only be using the move and transform menu item for this demo. The others should work in a similar fashion. Under move and transform, drag the copy data item over to the visual editor and fill out the name and description. You will notice a red one above source and sync. This indicates that there is a required field in each of these two menu items. So click on source and select new to create a new data set. Under Azure, search for and select Azure Blob Storage. This is what we created earlier. Select the limited text here. Binary is another option that will work in this case. Click on continue, then give this a name and create a new link service. You can give this a name and description. For connection via integration runtime, leave the default selected. This will create a serverless location for your scripts to run when you trigger the pipeline. Keep most of the defaults. For storage account names, select the storage account you created earlier. You can test the connection here to verify you have access. Create and set the properties in the next form. Give this a meaningful name. Don't change the link service and browse for the input file under the source root folder. Select it and click OK. This will fill out the location in the form for you. Click OK. Source is finished. Now fill out the sync information with the same selections as previous. If the field requires a unique name, the form will warn you to change the name. Here we select Azure Blob. 
and delimited text, giving it a name. If the name is duplicate, it warns us. We select the same link service and here we will hit the browse button and look for the sync folder. Click OK. We can put this in a new directory if we want. In this case, we're going to select output. And then output.csv as the file name. Click OK. As you can see, there's an error. So we're going to change the import schema to none to fix this. The error actually mentions that this was the issue. OK, sync is complete now. Notice that there are some items under the pipelines and datasets menu items on the left frame now. This is based on what we just created. Next, we will trigger the pipeline we just created. First, we double check that everything is ready. The integration runtime is in a running state. Here I am filling out a description that I skipped earlier. Now we need to publish or deploy our changes to the integration runtime. Click on the publish all button at the top and click publish again. To run this pipeline manually, select the add trigger menu item and then trigger now. You can also create an automated trigger here. Click on the OK button. When the pipeline is finished, you will see a Run Succeeded window in the upper right. If you missed this, you can also check on the status by clicking on the bell icon in the upper right. This will show a history of the notifications for this session. You can get details about this pipeline run under the monitor item in the left frame. Click on the name to get more details. You can see input, output, and details next to the activity name. Here is what the information looks like. The details icon shows data transfer size, runtime, connections used, and other useful information. Now let's check the containers to verify the file was transferred correctly. After clicking on the sync item, you can see an output.csv file here, matching our sync settings in the pipeline. You can see the data contents along with other metadata about this transfer. The data looks the same as the source data file, so we know this pipeline ran successfully. Remember to delete the resource group when you are finished, if you no longer need it. Thank you for watching our video. Comments and suggestions are appreciated. See you next time.